Hey, what's up guys? You got Gypsy, and today we are back with my week 10 game in the BBL. So this is going to be the last week of the regular season before we jump into playoffs. And this week we're facing up against Bird. <clears throat> and uh, he doesn't have too many Ubers on his team, but he's, he's built himself a really, really solid team uh, because he f chose to forego grabbing like two big, big uh, Ubers early on in the draft. And he has secured himself Mega Metagross, so definitely uh, one of the best Megas available in the draft in my opinion. And then he's got threats like uh, Z Volcarona, Z Zygarde, Tapu Koko, um, Alolan Muck, obviously, that he has brought. Uh, and he's got a few other threats on his team that he decided to leave on the bench, but uh, pretty pretty, uh, pretty well um, pretty well designed, in my, in my opinion. His team is um, pretty nice and balanced. He's got a lot of offensive threats. He's got strong, uh, strong defensive checks to a lot of teams. Uh, certainly to, like, my Mega Latios is going to have a really difficult time in this matchup given that he's got uh, a little muck and the Metagross as well as the Volibee. So it's uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty rough for Latios, and that's one of the reasons why I decided to leave it on the bench this week. Um, but we've got a pretty pretty nice team here. So first off, we have a Shift Gear 3 Attacks beginner can can really uh, just kind of win if I am able to weaken stuff like his Metagross, his muck, get up rocks, weaken his Coco a little bit. Uh, I do have Hidden Power Rock, of course, for the Volcarona. And then, uh, then I've got a nice, uh, nice defensive, like kind of like mixed defensive Ho here. Can really, can really do a number on his team. Can check Metagross pretty nicely with Sacred Fire. Handles Volcarona with ease, and nothing really wants to take a Sacred Fire burn on his team. He has Zygarde, which could be like a rest variant to be able to check, like a defensive rest variant to be able to check Ho. -Oh. That could certainly be what he, what he is. Um, but I have a Finny who can obviously check that pretty nicely as well, and my own Buzzwall can check a, a defensive Zygarde pretty easily. So. The next one we have here is Ferrothorn, um, and yeah, Ferrothorn <laughs> gets up hazards. His team hates hazards. Getting up rocks ensures Megina uh, doesn't have to worry about Focus Sashes, like Focus Sash Volk or something like that, and puts everything in range pretty much Megina. I've also got Spikes here, so if I want to dual, uh, dual stack him, I, I certainly can do that. Uh, then I have a uh, Scarf Lando actually this week. Um, had a few different ideas for this Lando, but ultimately went with Scarfed. It's just really nice insurance versus his Coco his, um, and his Metagross. And nothing really wants to take an EQ. He does have Volibee, but that's a that's a U-turn into something like Megina or my Finny. So uh, then I have a um, pretty bulky Finny with Defog. Uh, very, very, very nice here. Uh, he doesn't have great counterplay to it apart from his Coco and his uh, Metagross. So I can... Chip things with Moonblast and Surf, uh, get off Defox or Hoa if I need to, though I'm probably more than likely going to be stacking him in the early game if I can get Fur in. And then the last one we have here is a defensive Boswell. Uh, really good response to his Zygarde and uh, has enough attack to dent stuff like his Metagross and his Muck. So it's going to be the team. We're going to jump into the match. Um, I'm expecting more than likely his, um, his Zygarde to be potentially a Z variant. Uh, though Volcarona could be Z, I just, I don't see a way, like he could be Z Hyper Beam, that's potentially the way he attempts to break through Ho, or he could just be relying on having rocks up, his only rocker that he's brought is uh, Metagross, so that's, if that thing is rocks, it means it's uh, lacking coverage, it's going to be lacking coverage to hit something else on my team, which is going to be important, um, but uh, yeah, more, more than likely expecting something like Z Ground, uh, Zygarde, or potentially Z Outrage for my Buzzwall, so going to jump into the match. I'm going to lead off with uh, with my Lando as he does lead off with his Volcarona. Turn 1, I am not going to stay in <laughs> and risk getting Flame Body Burn, assuming he's a defensive set that could live um, an EQ. I'm going to go hard into my Ho. It also covers him going um, going hard into Volibee or even uh, or even his Metagross on my Stone Edge. So Ho, a pretty fine play there overall, as he does actually go out and do his Metagross here. So this is a really good position for us. We are able to live any hit from this Metagross as we click Sacred Fire on his rocks. And unfortunately, we do miss. Has a 5% chance to miss. Pretty frustrating, but um, yeah, it happens sometimes. He, he got rocks up there, which is very bold in the face of Ho, as Metagross is probably his biggest threat to my team, honestly. Like, it's the thing that I struggle to switch into most if it has the right coverage. And he, he was allowed to get up rocks freely there without being punished. Uh, he would have taken Sacred Fire, which would have put him in range of stuff like EQ from my Boswell, EQ from my own Lando, uh, Shadow Ball from my Megina. Uh, and it could have burnt him as well, which would have been really useful for the rest of my team. But unfortunately, we are going to miss there. As this turn, I am going to click Sacred Fire once again, as he does go into his Coco here. 
and he's going to take a nice chunk from the Sacred Fire. He doesn't get the burn, uh, but he, that's good damage. So I'm going to go hard into Lando here as he is going to fire for Dazzling Gleam. And that only does 38, so we would have lived Z there. But uh, we are going to U-turn out here as he's, he's kind of scared out by Lando. If I am like Yachi or if I'm Scarf, I'm obviously going to be able to take out Coco there. And Coco's a pretty important win con for him in this game. This is one of his best ways of beating down Mahoa. As he does go out into his Zygarde and it's going to reveal to be max HP and leftovers. So that's really, really good to know. He's not a fast variant. He could be like he could be like bulky offensive or he could be like spit F or something on this Zygarde uh, based on that U-turn damage. But I'm going to go into my feeding here and just get the defog off as his Zygarde is just going to click 1000 arrows. And this is really, really nice because now Narox are gone and I've gained some good information on this Zygarde. He's actually max attack adamant. That was a, that was 32% was a max roll that adamant lefties Zygarde could do with 1000 arrows. So that's good information to have. I know he's not. Um, I know he's not like now like a really defensive set. He's max HP, max attack. So um, I think he's gonna gonna take a little bit of chip, but it can get lefties up on stuff like Volibee. Um, you can always heal up on yeah Volibee, Volcarona as well if he's not running Giga Drain. So that's that's pretty nice. Uh, but right here he is gonna switch hard out into Volk as I do make the switch myself out into Buzzwall. I go Buzzwall expecting him to go either into his Muck or his. Um, or his Metagross there on my Finny, or even just to stay in and attack Thousand Arrows against my Finny with his Zygarde if he just wanted that thing weakened, uh, potentially for his Volcarona. Either way, Ho-Oh covered those, uh, Buzzwall covered those plays nicely, but he does actually make the switch out to his Volk, which gives me um, a pretty safe switch into my Ho-Oh because nothing this, this Volcarona can do can actually break my Ho-Oh at all, not with Rocks up, so... I am just going to go for the Brave Bird here, I'm wanting to get damage off in the Zygarde, I knew he was going to switch that in, Misty Train was up so he didn't fear getting burnt by the Sacred Fire there, so Zygarde definitely his best play in my opinion, as um, now he is going to go for the Toxic I believe, yeah he makes the Toxic play so I go into my Buzzwall, and that's okay, it puts Buzzwall on a timer, but uh, this is going to give us some really useful information on his Zygarde, I reveal Ice Punch as he reveals Protect, so his 1000 arrows Toxic Protect, he could be Sub, he could be DD, uh, he could be um, like... Dragon Dance or Coil, could be a number of things, um, but I am going to get him here with the EQ, so I'll just go back a turn, yeah. So I've revealed Ice Punch, uh, and as he does go for Protect here, and uh, I felt like, uh, yeah, right here he's going to make, he's not going to stay in with Zygarde, he doesn't want to lose health in this thing, because it's pretty much his best response to my Ho. Uh, and I felt like he would make the play out into his Metagross here because uh, either his Metagross or his Coco, he's going to want to get some form of offensive momentum back. And by going Gross, he's able to get Rocks up again. By going Coco, he's able to threaten out my, my Buzzwall and get big damage off on something, maybe a Nature's Madness off of my Pharaoh. But he's going to go out into his Metagross and we get a nice, nice about 40% with the EQ here, which is, which is useful. That's now in Shadow Ball range if he's offensive, but he's actually like max HP or something on this Metagross, so... He's going to need a bit more chip to be in shadow ball range from beginner and neutral. But I'm going to go back out into my hoe here as he does get up his rocks again. So this turn I am going to click Sacred Fire as his Volib is going to come in and take nothing from that. So big Volib, nice, nice defensive little cop mon. as I'm going to bring out my Finny here. As he does just click Whirlwind, uh, Whirlwinding me out. So he's, he's Roost, Whirlwind, probably foul play for my Megalatios and um, he could be Defog, I guess. Um, but I am going to roost up here with my Buzzwall and uh, just get get it back up to a nice amount. He, he can't actually touch me with his Volibee, so he, he can roost on me, certainly, and roost on me because I am toxic. But uh, my Buzzwall is a pretty solid, <laughs> pretty solid. Uh, the kind of matchup between Buzzwall and Volibee allows me to heal up at least once and then switch out accordingly. But we get him here again. Like he's gonna he's gonna stay in. Uh, he's gonna switch out with his Volibee, and instead of clicking Ice Punch or going hard Finny. Uh, which would have been a fine play or like hard beginner. I am going to stay and click Earthquake here. Um, I, I definitely get why Bird made the switch there to Gross because it, it threatened... Like if he goes Metagross and I go Finny there, I take Rocks and I potentially take a Meteor match in an attempt to Defog. Like he's in a really good spot with his Volk um, if he can maintain getting Rocks up later on in the game because then Ho will be chipped down to 50. Um, he also could have gone into Volk there and just on my Ice Punch and set up a Quiver Dance. Potentially could have been like Z Hyper Beam and like maybe could have killed Ho after Rocks. I don't know. I'm like very, very spit I didn't run the calc, but 
Um, either way, like I felt like that was uh, that was a play that he could potentially make. And me staying in and clicking EQ versus a volley that can pretty much only whirlwind me away anyway isn't I, I don't lose a, a huge deal by making that play. So I'm gonna go for Earthquake as he does switch out to his Gross, and he's gonna take another 40 from that. 44 actually, so that's that's really nice. This thing is now in range of I think uh, two rounds of chip from my Pharaoh. Yeah, so he is gonna go for the Zen headbutt, and he is now. Uh, in range of another uh, like iron barbs so this turn I am going to actually switch out into F to Finny here so the reason I go Finny on Pharaoh is a scout for the hammer arm here so I'm going to go in for the, in for the Zen and get him down to 4% I'm going to go hard into Finny scouting for hammer arm and uh, I would have taken that and been able to get a defog off before he was able to take me out because of his speed drop he'd revealed to be like max attack or something with a ton of bulk so he wouldn't be faster than my Finny at minus 1 speed if he did have hammer arm, and if he didn't have hammer arm, he was switching hard into Volk, trying to get it in before rock. So Finny covered both players there, as uh, I will be able to get the defog off as he is scared out into his Coco. As uh, he's going to go Coco here, uh, maybe he wanted to get the roost off, expecting me to defog there. He wasn't actually sacking Coco, can't be too sure, but he's going to get the roost up here. And this turn, I am just going to throw up my own rocks, as finally Fer is in and can get rocks up. As he's going to reveal to be T-Bolt, Roost, um, Dazzling Gleam, and Defog. So his Coco is walled by my Pharaoh. So I'm going to get my rocks up once again. And then make the switch out into my ho on his Volcarona as he makes the double back into his Coco. But it's, uh, it's not actually too bad for me at all because I can just go back into my Pharaoh. And I'll throw, my, throw out Leech Seeds here if he wants to constantly Defog. I will win this exchange. Stealth Rocks has more PP. And I uh, will be able to get the Leech off on him. Constantly recovering health each turn. But he's going to go hard into his muck, and rocks are going to remain up, which is really important because now my beginner is looking really nice. Uh, his Metagross dies upon entry. Everything's in range to die to the respective coverage move, and I do have Z uh, Fluid Cannon on here, so it's looking really nice. Uh, this muck is kind of the last sort of thing standing in the way of beginner just winning, so if I can ship this thing in range, determine its set. Um, the way it, the way it, uh, the way it did 12% to my defensive Boswell implies that he's certainly like max attack and he's going to reveal to have the, the berry here. So he's he's a gluttony set. He's a max attack gluttony set and that's good to know. I'm going to roost up here as he does go into his uh, volibee here and I think this turn I just go hard out to my... No, I click Ice Punch here, yeah. I click Ice Punch as he roosts up um, and this turn I'm going to switch hard into my Finny, I believe as he is just going to go for the roost again. Um, yeah, not sure why he roosted again. I think probably maybe whirlwinding there would have been a better play on making it double. Um, but he does go for the roost there as Finny is going to get going to be inside here and just click Moonblast on this muck. And that deals a nice 27%. So he's actually max spit F, no HP based on based on these calcs. And that was confirmed after the game I asked him to spread and he, he was indeed like max H, max attack, max spit F with the figgy berry or the, uh, you know, the super berry. So right here, uh, I'm going to go hard out into my beginner as I do expect to recycle here. I'll just click poison jab. And now I can actually shift gear up as he's going to go for the fire punch. Now I've got the Z move and I am going to click it here. Uh, even if he doesn't, even if he scouts for this and go and sacks Metagross, um, Mark is going to come back in on rocks, get his berry and then be out of range of a plus one fluor cannon. But I can just click a coverage move knowing that I live a fire punch and take him out the following turn with Fluor Cannon. Either way, Maginner is going to force at least two sacks, and that is what's going to happen here. So I'm going to go for the Z here, as obvious as it was. I didn't lose a ton by it, as um, Maginner is like so strong that he will be able to take out pretty much everything, even without the Z move. So I'm going to go for the Hidden Power Rock here, as it does a nice 26 to Mark, and he's now actually in range based on what I imagine his spread is and what indeed he was, um, he's now in range of the neutral fluor cannon. I think mineral was like 78% or something like that. So he's going to go down there as he's going to now bring in his Volby. I'm going to fire for fluor cannon and, and uh, miss there. I think, um, again, he roosted it up. I think it's hard to say, like I don't, Volby was never living a fluor cannon from that range of health anyway. So I think even from full. So I think maybe there he should have whirlwinded. Just, just to stop Mage from being faster than everything on his team, but he does roost up, and Volibee is gonna is gonna drop here to the uh, neutral fluor cannon, and I'm now at minus one, and this Zygarde, even uh, he's gonna go for the protector, which is a fine play, 
getting his lefties back, but because I am max special attack modest, he is still in range of the floor cannon and he is going to drop even at minus one. So now I'm at minus two thanks to Soul Heart. And uh, this Volcaron is not in range of Hidden Power Rock if he's like a really bulky variant. So I'm going to go hard into Ho here. Ho is the check and just click Sacred Fire expecting the Coco Sack. And uh, Sacred Fire also would have just chunked Volk. It would have done like easily over 50. And um, his Volcarona is going to click Z Fire, Z Fire something, and do 24% to Ho. And we're going to wrap this game up. So, yeah, this, um, this game, obviously, a nice way to round out the season with another 6 0. Um, but I think, like, despite it being a 6 0, it definitely felt like it was more of a. There was more in the game than it just being like a flat out wheelchair. Like, it. I think Berta played it well. I think he had a really tough matchup as well. Like, I had solid responses to his offensive threats. So in Volk, I had um, my Finny and my Hoa, which forced certain coverage. For his Zygarde, I had Finny, Lando, Buzzwall. Coco, I had Pharaoh. I had my own Lando. Um, Metagross was probably the biggest threat, but even so, I had decent defensive counterplay to it. I had Buzzwall, Pharaoh, Lando. A Hoa as well, which obviously checked it. Um, so... Yeah, it was, it was definitely an uphill battle for Bird. I think in terms of building, he would have been very constrained in what he could bring um, just because of my top seven ones. So I definitely come across those matchups sometimes in draft and it doesn't really help that in this Ubers League, <laughs> like broken matchups like this can really just be a nightmare to prep for. So uh, either way, that is definitely uh, the last game of the regular season. So we're going to jump to playoffs um, in the coming week or so. Actually, I think there's going to be a break. I think playoff uploads will be going up on the 28th or something, uh, late April. So you can expect those around that time. Uh, we are going to be facing under the radar Kelly, who took over for Bill. And he's he inherited a team that we played, I think, like week two or something in the regular season, the Mega Lucario team. And uh, Kelly has done really well. He's He brought the team from some like awful like one and four, one and five record to making playoffs so he I think he won like all of his games or he he won like all of them but one or something like that he might have lost one I'm not sure but either way he he made a really impressive comeback and yeah looking forward to facing him in round one of the playoffs but that's going to be it for the regular season of the BBL let me know, know what you guys thought of the match and what you guys thought of the regular season in the comments and yeah what you guys are thinking for playoffs that's going to be it drop a like if you enjoyed and I'll catch you next time